There you go. I think I got the right options. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, everybody uh, getting getting used to Zoom these days. So, um, like, what happened to Skype? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, I actually missed missed out on Skype. Is is that your girl there, right next to you? Yeah, that's her. Come on, come closer. Think? Got closer, girl. Hmm. And what what what's her name? Clotilde. Clotilde. And Ooh. she's almost six months old now, and we're, we're, I guess, your question, or, or what, what, what's your question about Clotilde? Uh, the, uh, well, we know she's got se severe BOAS, and that's what we were talking to the surgeon about opening her nares and doing her palate stuff, but she wants to wait till she's a little bit older. But sure. she said what concerned her most, and she was kind of hesitant about the anesthesia, was the head tilt. She's sure. like, we need to find out what this head tilt See, it's tilted to the left right now. That's how she normally, it's always a slight tilt. Most people don't notice it till you point it out. But when you point it out, they say, oh, yeah. And I think I sent you a message uh, that we were in the PetSmart and the cashier noticed. We didn't have to. She's like, oh, her cute little head tilt. I'm thinking in my head, lady, this is not cute. There's something wrong. <laughs> you know, like everybody thinks all this snorting and snoring and stuff. They think it's cute. It's not cute. Right. It's Funny, you know. Yeah. So, so um, j just for for other people who are listening, so um, brachycephalic airway syndrome, just the French bulldogs and and pugs, they'll get kind of a with their squishy face. Sometimes their nostrils will be a little small, and their trachea or their windpipe small, and their uh, soft palates long. So, um, yeah. you know, yeah, some people call it cute, sort of that that snortiness or that uh, uh, snoring, but it, it does cause a, a significant uh, health. Very that both my two previous Frenchies have both had uh, the surgery, the airway surgery and the palate and everything. As a matter of fact, my three-year-old Frenchie, he was supposed to be going up to the University of Illinois, March 23rd for late. I don't know if you've heard of late yet. Laser-assisted turbinectomy. Okay. The, there's only one doctor doing it, Dr. O in, uh, in Germany. Well, the University of Illinois is now trained on doing it, but of course they had to cancel him. It's where they go in there and clear out the turbinates. That's what he, the negative air pressure in his airway is it's really bad <laughs> so, so w w with regards to her head tilt so you you've had her since she was how old 10 weeks and Ten we weeks. don't remember noticing it then this is like yeah. over the last five or six weeks we've noticed a head tilt H have you noticed any in coordination or anything like that like um when she's able to when she's trying to chase a ball or jump up on the couch is she more off balance or He's leaning or falling <laughs> She's clumsy. I wouldn't say, now see, she can go outside and find a little tiny ant on the ground and chase it just perfectly fine. Okay. But she is clumsy. She doesn't, she runs when she runs. I think I sent you a video. She's, she seems pretty normal. But sometimes when she walks, if you catch her walking, she'll walk like this, you know, the head would be a little tilted to the side. Sometimes it's perfectly straight, but a lot of times it's tilted to the left. And the doc, like I said, the doctor looked at her ears and it's like, I don't see anything wrong with her ears. There's no infection, there's no this, there's no that. So is this something that is progressive? And what do you might think it is? Yeah, so so head, head, so I've got your videos here. And, and just if you're, if you're wondering, if you see me looking off to the side, it's because I'm looking at the, the videos on my phone on Messenger as opposed to, to chatting with someone else. Uh, um, I'm, I'm looking at the videos, uh, so, sort of the first video is, incredibly cute where she's just uh, sort of flipping her bowl over but she seems very alert and very intent on it to me she doesn't look incoordinated like she's listing or falling to any side um i don't see any head tremors or anything like that um <clears throat> sort of the the second and third video it's more she's sitting and i think you were trying to show me the way that she breathes and and kind of how she extends her neck um yeah. So I, I don't see one where she's walking. I see a, a photo of her walking sort of next to a, um, a, a planter um, or a, a, a garden. And, and yeah, her, her head's pretty cocked there. And then the one in the bathtub, her head's pretty cocked to the left in, in both of them. And you know, certainly me watching her right now. Wow, she's walking to her bed now and she's like this. Yeah. I mean, but she walks perfectly straight, but with a tilt. Maybe that's just comfortable for her. I don't know. Maybe I'm exaggerating this. But. Yeah, so so if, if she were here with me in person, um, the things that we'd be looking at on her examination. So a head tilt, 
is suggestive of a balance problem. So when dogs have a problem with their balance system, one of the most common symptoms is tilting their head to the side. But usually I look for other additional symptoms, like they, they list to the side, they're, they're sort of walk drunk towards the same side of the head tilt. Um, sometimes, we, sometimes we also see abnormal eye movements, uh, um, what we call nystagmus, where the eyes sort of jerk in the opposite direction. Um, so, and, and, and that's, that's good. So we want this to be sort of a, hey, yeah, that's just her being cute or that's just the posture that she has, as opposed to it being a balance problem. When we have balance problems, the things that we think of are either things like inner ear problems or um, part, problems in the back part of the brain. Inner ear problems, when we have a young dog, we think of things like ear infections or congenital malformations. Um, I think things like a toxin are, are less likely. When we right. think of from a brain standpoint, we worry about congenital malformations. We worry about things like brain infections and inflammation, things that are much more worrisome, but I don't want you to lose sleep about with her. It's not that I have a high suspicion of that for her based off of what you're telling me and what we're seeing. So, um, I think what you're doing is very, very reasonable, you know, going to your vet, having him or her look at her ears to make sure there isn't something obvious in there, keeping an eye on things and seeing, are they getting worse? Are we seeing other symptoms like abnormal eye movements or um, listing or falling to the side? So right now, I wouldn't overly worry about it. I think it's logical. Um, I, I believe in your text, you said that you, you have an appointment coming up with a neurologist or? Um... Yeah, they, well, the, well, they kind of wanted to wait because of the anesthesia thing. And plus she's only six months old. They wanted to get her to about seven, seven and a half. So that way when they put her under the anesthesia to do an MRI, they're gonna do her nares at the same time. Okay. They don't want to put her under twice. Sure. And it, yeah, I'm sure you've heard of med vets before, huh? Oh yeah, yeah they're, they're one of the, the big, big I, neurology. I, here in New Orleans, Dr. Lang. Okay. In New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So um, I, I guess in summary, yes, she has a head tilt. Um, I think the fact that we're not seeing other things suggestive of a balance problem, like walking drunk or rapid eye movements or what we call nystagmus um, or abnormal eye position, what we call strabismus. I think it's a reasonable plan to keep an eye on her, watch for those things, meet with the neurologist that can evaluate her in person to say, do we need to worry about those more or less? Um, but, but right now she's just super cute and I keep doing what I'm doing, what you're doing. It is something that could possibly be, I think she mentioned vestibular, vestibular. Is that something that is progressive and can it be fixed? Sure. So let's, when I say balance problems, that that's, that's what synonymous with vestibular. So um, the vestibular system, is the balance system. So there are multiple things that can cause vestibular or balance problems. Ear problems, inner ear infections can cause vestibular problems. Right. Strokes can cause vestibular problems. Malformations or congenital, you know, birth defects can cause um, balance problems. So there are lots of things Frenchies. <laughs> there are lots of things that can cause vestibular disease or, or balance problems. Some of them are progressive. Some of them are static. Some of them can get better with treatment. Some of them get better on their own. So it's impossible for me to, to look at her and one, say, is this even vestibular disease? All I can say is she has a head tilt but without looking for other symptoms of vestibular problems like abnormal gait, um, walking, listing to the side, right. or abnormal eye movements, it's impossible for me to say, is it vestibular disease? Even if she had those other things on, on our video right now, without testing, I wouldn't be able to tell you, is it progressive or not? So for example, um, strokes tend not to be progressive. Those tend to go from a 10 to a two, and then they get better. They don't keep getting worse. Um, right. Congenital malformations, 
usually those you know don't get worse they stay the same um degenerative conditions yes those continue to get worse over time tumors and meningitis yes those are progressive so the best way for someone to be able to answer that question for you of one is it true vestibular disease and two is it um, a progressive cause of vestibular disease is a neurologist consultation in person that they can just look much more in depth than I'm able to, you know, via video. And two, by doing some tests to find out, is there an ear infection, a tumor, a stroke, a malformation, et cetera. So you agree with moving forward with doing an MRI at this time? Yeah. So um, I agree with meeting with Dr. Lang and they'll be able to in person be able to evaluate her and say tell you the pros and cons of an mri versus the anesthesia versus the expense etc um anesthesia is a zillion times safer than it used to be um you know mris are you know um more affordable than they used to be um so i do think from what i'm seeing there's absolutely a reason to meet with a neurologist and based on their observation, if they feel that an MRI is warranted, I think from a medical standpoint, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's warranted at this point. Um, so, but Dr. Now, Lynn is gonna be a little uh, better to tell you. And I would her either maybe being dizzy or this or that or whatever. I didn't tell you, she vomits often. Her food, she does after she eats, sometimes it's five minutes later, sometimes it's four hours later and her food is still whole. It's not even digested. So I was kind of thinking maybe with the head tilt when she eats, she feels dizzy and she vomits. Is that like too far fetched? <laughs> so w when she when when she vomits, can you tell that she's going to vomit or just kind of come up out of nowhere? It just okay. it, or, or I guess it may be a regurgitation then. Exactly. That's what I'm getting at. So so vomiting <laughs> this stuff. I spent $60,000 on my oldest Frenchie with two IBDD surgeries, cancer. I know the whole ball game. <laughs> yeah. So, so regurgitation tends to be more when I say, when I hear things like whole food or right after eating, or, you know, it just kind of comes up. That makes me think of more things like regurgitation as opposed to vomiting. It's more like you can tell that they're sick. There's kind of this lurching to it. Um, so quickly so it could be her palate too elongated possibly yeah, I, I, I talked to your veterinarian about regurgitation because when we think of regurgitation we think of different diseases than when we think of vomiting um vomiting is something that i more often see with balance problems whereas this sounds more like regurgitation uh, i i i think it's less likely to be related to um a balance problem Okay, good, 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 good. I think that was basically all my question. I wish I can give you more information. Um, another thing, and I don't know if it has to do with this, whatever. I don't know if her tongue's too long or she just doesn't know how to retract it. She has what we call hanging tongue syndrome. Yeah, I, 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 I'm <laughs> unaware of anything that can be done about that other than just, you know, I, I think it's cute, so. Um. <laughs> Lord, I mean, I don't know if it's something that can you cut their tongue shorter or, you know, no. I'm thinking all the things that are going on with her, something is central to what's going on with her. That's, I mean, that's just my opinion. You're the professional. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think the tongue is necessarily a problem and certainly um, mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't go cutting it or anything like that. Um, Got so. it. <laughs> All righty. Well, I hope this was useful. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you know, this is kind of the first time we're doing this. Uh, um, this is, you know, we're, 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 we're figuring things out. Um, I actually have a, another person um, that's next. So probably next time we'll, we'll add in some extra time so that, you know, I, I've got more time to, to chat things with you. Um, but, you know, if, if you've got ideas for us, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure Emily will be reaching out to you. Um, to see if there are any follow-up questions or if there's anything we can do do better next time but you're you're our very first person doing this uh, um thank you you definitely made me feel a lot more comfortable with the way we're proceeding so that's a good yeah so in, in summary my, my my gut feel is it's my gut feel is it's nothing bad 
from the balance and from the head tilt standpoint. You know, if you told me she was off, she was off balance and she was stumbling and the eyes were moving, you know, I, I would actually suggest doing the MRI separate from the, the, the I would suggest going towards the MRI faster, but based on what you're telling me, my gut feel is that it's nothing super bad. And, um, you know, if, if the recommendation is let's wait a month for the consultation with the, um, with the neurologist, my gut feel is waiting a month isn't going to be anything negative for her. But if something changes, if she becomes more off balance, if it's getting worse, don't, don't wait yeah. a month. Hoping to at least get her to the point where it's not too early to do the nares. Because she's like, Jerry, I know what you've been through with Marceau and Jean-Pierre. I don't want you to, you know, let's do the nares once and knock it out and be done with it. Sure. So let's do it while she's under getting her MRI. So I was good with that. <laughs> and it. she definitely knows brachycephalic anesthesia protocol. So I'm good with that. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank cool. you so much. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll let you know when we're, when we're ready to, to put this out. So you can keep an eye out for it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate right, it. Thank you. Nice meeting you. I can hear you. How are you? you I'm me? Dr. Oh, Long, yeah, Michael. Yeah. Hello. Uh, hello. So be bear with us. This is kind of the, the very first time that we're doing this. You're the, the second person. We just finished with the first person. So um, be bear with us if there are any sort of uh, hiccups or anything like that. Um, so I see. No worries. You have a one-year-old, I guess, tell me about your puppy. How, how old is she? What kind of dog is she? When did you get her? And um, sort of what, what are the symptoms that you're seeing? And what's your question? So I uh, volunteer with French Bulldog Village. I picked up, I'm in San Diego. They're more on the East Coast. I picked up probably maybe seven, six to seven months ago, a little French Bulldog um, <laughs> That's her. Um, she's approximately um, 14 months old, okay. intact, um, basically from a hobby breeder. And um, she wasn't positive the dog was going to live. And finally, at 10 months, she decided to hand it over to rescue. I stepped up. I now have the thing. <laughs> it is, um, she's intact. She is. Um, don't know her background, um, but she's been with me. And unfortunately, due to this whole COVID thing, she's been with me a really long time. And she's got some abnormal um, heat cycles. Uh, what else? And we suspected she was hydrocephalus. Um, she has seen a, a neurologist down here in San Diego County. Um, but I just don't know anything about the breed, uh, not the breed, I'm sorry, hydrocephalus. And what am I, what's in store? I, I just don't understand some of her behavior, how she looks. She's also malformed. Um, yeah, so, so, so what symptoms are, are you seeing? What, what, what does she do? Um, she has a tendency to walk into things. She'll fall over. Uh, she loses her balance. She's definitely wall-eyed. Um, she cannot, um, she doesn't focus very well, but I do believe she sees. She sees okay, but it's just kind of off maybe. Um, she walks flat-footed. Um, what else does she do? Mostly walking in, falling over. Her balance is very off. Um, what else? Um, just a general, <laughs> she just generally looks kind of kooky. <laughs> So, so I've I've got the videos that you sent um, sent me, and, and if if I if it looks like I'm, you know, checking my phone over here, it's it's then I, then I'm looking at your messages. So no worry. I've I've got the the sort of um, picture of her sitting on it almost looks like a trampoline or a raised bed type. Yes. I've got the video of her playing with the cat, and then she just falls um, over. <laughs> a, a, a photo. It's kind of a split photo. One of her. Uh, kind of looking at her from behind and one looking at her from the side. Yeah. And th th that, that's what I've got here. So when, when you say that she bumps into things, is it like she'll walk straight into it or just as she's walking, she falls to the side and bumps into something? Both. 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 Okay. She, um, she also her, her back end seems to work independently of her front end. So if she's sure. running, the back end will fly out. 
um, kind of like in that video with the yeah. cat, she's trying to play, but, but she, her back end just goes out. Um, if she's running too fast, she'll run into stuff. Um, she's definitely improving. Okay. But I just don't know what's in store. Um, as I've had her, she's also started to become, oh, maybe resource guard, maybe a little more aggressive or possessive. I know we're not supposed to put human emotions onto animals, but I'm not sure of what's, I just have never had a hydrocephalus dog. Sure. So, and then did the neurologist actually think she had hydrocephalus or what, what did the neurologist in San Diego think about her? Do you have that report? I do have that report. Um, and she actually wanted to rule out a couple of things. However, she said she would not. Um, her history is suggestive of both brain and spinal cord involvement, non-progressive, rule out malformations, hydrocephalus, arachnoid diverticulum, a quadrigeminal cistern, vertebral malportions, hemivertebrae, butterfly vertebrae, hypoplastic articulation, spinal arachnoid, cyst, diverticulum, uh, syringomelia, and other. Um, okay. So that we didn't rule out anything, but at the end of that, she just said she's due to her static state. She wouldn't do anything with her anyway. Sure, and 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 I think that's you know good good advice. Um, obviously, I'm somewhat limited in what I you know can do for you just off of talking and off of seeing videos. Um, so the fact that you've seen a neurologist in person that's evaluated her, that's going to kind of trump anything that that i say um in this video when i see her running around granted it's just for you know two seconds but she seems very very alert she seems very aware that there's a cat there her front legs what we call her thoracic limbs seem nice and strong but yeah it's kind of as she makes that turn her back legs sort of swing mm -hmm. out from behind her then she gets up and she runs um in in the pictures that you have where she's standing I guess she doesn't look flat-footed to me. She looks like she's, you know, nice and upright there. So I, I don't see any, when I hear things like flat-footed, I worry about nerve problems and just the, the video doesn't suggest any of that. Uh, yes, the photos that I sent were more so that you could uh, visual, I think you can visualize in those pictures that her spine is actually crooked. Kind of a curve of the school. Yeah, um, and flat-footed, um, I guess it reminds me of like an older dog. As older dogs lose their tendons, they kind of slope down a little bit and don't walk so much on their tiptoes. That's how she walks. Um, I guess that picture wasn't a good one for that. So, so I, I guess to answer your question about hydrocephalus specifically, and, and we don't know that she has hydrocephalus um, in, in that we haven't diagnosed it with an MRI or anything like that. Um, based on her head shape, um, sure, hydrocephalus is, is, is possible. Um, hydrocephalus just means excessive uh, fluid or CSF accumulation, um, typically within the brain. So the brain normally has tissue and then fluid on the inside of it. And um, if there's excessive fluid, that's what we call hydrocephalus, okay. that can be due to a couple reasons, but in young dogs, it's most common, commonly a congenital malformation where the fluid doesn't drain properly. So okay. it backs up kind of like putting a, a, a dam in front of, you know, the mouth of a river. It'll back things up from there. Um, symptoms of hydrocephalus can range from things like behavior changes, blindness, sort of the setting sun eyes where they kind of, you know, go down and out and dogs may be mentally completely normal or they might be you know not not normal sometimes we have dogs that just walk in circles constantly and and aren't uh interacting with the world at all so by this video here she looks like she's relatively mildly affected in that she's mm -hmm. able to walk she's aware of what's going on etc um treatment for hydrocephalus it kind of one depends on truly diagnosing hydrocephalus, but um, there are a couple ways that we manage dogs with hydrocephalus in general. So not for your pup specifically, but in general. Um, one would be with medications to either decrease 
the amount of fluid being produced or increase the rate of absorption of that fluid. Um, and then the other would be a, a surgical procedure that sort of drains the fluid or redirects the fluid from the brain to the belly or sometimes even to the, the, the heart sac. Um, okay. So treatment wise, you know, I'm, I'm not recommending any of those for, for her. Yeah. Um, one, just because I haven't evaluated, two, because we don't have a diagnosis, but three, I agree with the neurologist that if she's static and we don't see her getting worse, or if anything, we even see her getting a little bit better, you know, kind of my, my rule is if a dog is getting better, my, my job is to, to get the heck out of the way and let it get better. <laughs> okay. um, from your description of kind of the front ends not connected to the back end, and just from this short video here, where to me, she looks alert, her thoracic limbs or her front legs seem normal, but the back legs kind of flip out from her. That to me is more suggestive of a spinal cord problem affecting the okay. back. And that sounds like what the neurologist was describing as well of maybe we have a problem in the brain and a problem in the back. Um, the, the examination or the video here, all it's doing is suggesting or telling us where the problem is. It doesn't tell us what the problem is. And that's where we come up with a list of possible causes what we call our differential diagnosis. And we try and put the possible causes, you know, sort of in order based off of her age, her breed, you know, when the symptoms started, are they getting better, or worse, staying the same? Is she painful, et cetera? So lots of those things of um, congenital malformation of hemivertebra um, or, um, you know, butterfly vertebra or, uh, Syringomyelia is a fluid buildup on the inside of the spinal cord. Um, a subarachnoid or spinal arachnoid cyst or spinal arachnoid diverticulum is a fluid pocket kind of on the outside of the spinal cord. Um, so those are all things that we see in relatively young French bulldogs, um, as well as some other young dogs. So those need to be on our worry list. And there are kind of two ways that we approach that. One would be doing tests, meaning an MRI. Usually a, a X-ray isn't enough to show us. Most of the time, even a CAT scan isn't enough to show us the complete picture. A CAT scan could show us the bones very well. So things like hemivertebra or scoliosis, we would see really well, but usually an MRI is the best way for us to see everything. So there are kind of two ways that we would approach a young dog with these sorts of symptoms. One would be doing an MRI to find out what the underlying cause is. And the other would be, well, not doing anything, not doing those tests because MRIs require anesthesia. MRIs usually have a significant cost to them. And then the other thing behind doing tests is, you know, we don't like to do tests just to find out or just for the sake of doing a test. Um, we, we like to do the test to give us information to let us help that patient. And when we hear things like, well, she's not painful and she's getting better. And then many of those things on the worry list, the spinal arachnoid diverticulum, the hemivertebra, um, you know, congenital malformations, if she's getting better and she's not painful, many times we wouldn't actually recommend surgery or treatment anyway. So I think you've got a, a, a really good um, recommendation in, uh, of, of, of what to do right now. We shouldn't be doing anything, but if she becomes painful, if she starts getting worse, if she's not getting better, you know, if, if we see a trend in the wrong direction, yeah, at that point, we'll change our tune. It's time to do tests. But right now, from what you're showing me and what you're telling me, and most importantly, what the neurologist is seeing, um, th that's where uh, I think you've got good, good information there. Um, okay. So are, because I don't know about hydrocephalus, part of my question was, is there things that I can study and what will I be looking for? As, is there a, I guess there's not a normal at every dog being individual, but is there going to be something that 
hydrocephalus does to her behaviorally. Um, as far as the hydrocephalus is concerned, a little background on me. Um, I, I'm now an instructor for veterinary assist, veterinary technicians. I am a technician, registered technician in California, but I'm, uh, you know, not practicing. I'm teaching now. Sure. Uh, but again, I have no um, experience with this. And so a friend, sort of a friend, um, a Dr. Wallach down here in San Diego Veterinary Imaging Center, he did a, a ultrasound on her liver to check for a shunt because they were worried about her. She stayed super small. She's very small. Um, she's maxed out at 15 pounds and still very kind of small compared. Um, he, for the heck of it, just said, oh, let me look at her brain. <laughs> He's kind of funny. Exactly. Guy. Yep. And, he did find, and he did kind of find a couple of spots at the back of the head, so to speak, um, that he kind of were suggestive that we kind of saw something to okay. kind of steer us towards that. So I guess I'm just worried what d will happen. Does she have a, a soft spot on her head? Can you? She doesn't. Um, okay. But he was able, he, he got one of his... Uh, crazy heavy duty wands and just like soaked her head and would just wanted to see it just kind of for me um because we were paying for the the liver um sure mri but he just wanted to kind of see he did find something but not you know yeah so so sometimes we can use an ultrasound um to give us an idea of whether there's hydrocephalus or not usually it takes um there being a a, a, a soft spot yeah. um, in, in the skull in order for the ultrasound probe to, to look through it. Um, so to, to answer your question specifically, what should you be looking for with regards to progression of hydrocephalus? Um, you know, changes in behavior, just her, you know, not learning things or forgetting things that she used to know, things like walking in circles, things like getting right. lost, those are kind of early signs of a brain problem of, of you know, that, that, that would prompt me to say, gosh, is it time to move towards going back to the neurologist and saying, hey, things have changed since, since last time we saw her. Okay. Do, do dogs with mild hydrocephalus have sort of long lives or normal lives or? Yeah, I mean, based on what I'm seeing in the video, um, I mean, she she does not look like a dog that has severe hydrocephalus yeah. that I would be super concerned about. Um, so the, the dogs with hydrocephalus that I worry about are, you know, more, more like zombies or they're walking in circles or they, you know, they're, um, I, again, the video I have is just her interacting with the cat, but she looks like a, you know, normal 14 month old dog <laughs> with regards to her, her cognitive function. You yeah. know, she's aware, she says, hey, let's play. You know, when the cat runs that way, she goes after it. So um, again, doctor in town, neurologist in town that can see her is going to know better than me. But from the video you're showing me, um, I think you're doing the right thing by being aware, by educating yourself. Um, but I wouldn't get into things like, um, you know, I, I wouldn't lose sleep at this point. Okay, because <laughs> I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of considering being a foster failure with her. Yeah, oh, I, I can tell. I've because I've... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want her to go. Like you know, I I do. She does. She's gotten better. She has trouble navigating stairs, so I only have a couple stairs on my porch. Um, so I don't want her going somewhere where there's stairs. She'll fall right off of them. So that's another thing that she does is falling off stairs. Um, so, but she's she's happy. <laughs> oh, I, I I can tell. I mean, she's landed in a in a good spot with a <laughs> in a caring mom that also knows a lot about the field. So, um, thank you for taking her on, and you know, thank you for being a vet tech and for you know teaching future vet techs. So, uh, I I I appreciate what you do. Um, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for doing these talks and educating everyone. <laughs> you, you got, I mean, for what it's worth, this is the first time we're doing it in this format. So I, I, I apologize if it's a, a little wonky. Um, we, we, we set it up as 15 minute sections. So one of the thing I'm learning already is, you know, we should probably do 25 minute sessions and kind of have a five minute um, yeah. overlap. <laughs> but, um, 
you know, so I apologize if, if we're being a little brief. Um, we'll, we'll, if, if you've got more questions, feel free to send, send them to us. Um, and, you know, if you've got suggestions on how we can make this better, I'd, I'd really be interested in that sort of thing. Oh, it's, it's great. I, I totally appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Take okay. care. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How are you, Heather? I'm good. Thank you. Yourself? I'm all right. I'm, I'm Michael Wong. Um, are, are, are you going to flip your... Yeah, two seconds. Is that better? Perfect. Excellent. So um, nice to meet you. Thank you for doing this with us. Um, I, I guess just to let you know, this is um, kind of the first time we're doing it this format where it's face to face. Uh, right. um, uh, apologize about the, uh, I guess, if there are any sort of hiccups along the way. No um, problem. And uh, what, what else, what else? S sorry about the timing. Um, I actually talk with someone in the UK once every month. And right. And, and I still haven't figured out the time zone difference. <laughs> it's every single time we do it, it takes us five minutes to figure it out. So I apologize about that, that goof up. Um, so you have, I see two different Frenchies. Um, yes. Let me bring up your, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at your videos on my phone here. So, right. uh, so you have two Frenchies, one had surgery um, in years past and and had a second surgery in january i, I guess can you can you tell me uh, about him H how old is he what kind of dog is he um what tell me about his surgery before and then right. tell me about um what what's the the surgery in january and what's going on now right so basically he's four um just turned four uh, he had his first surgery june last year okay so that surgery, obviously I didn't know anything about IVDD at that time. Um, and he just lost all ability to use his back legs. Okay. So obviously I kind of rushed him to the vets and they took him in, done the surgery, um, which was very successful. He was back up on his feet within two days, okay. um, which was great. Um, he recovered well, pretty much back to normal, apart from a little bit wobbly. Then January this year, I started to see signs of it again, you know, sort of sitting down lots, the pain, knuckling over on the toes. So again, I took him back to the vets, got referred over to um, the Royal Dick Vets that we use here. And they took him in, kept him in overnight to give him pain meds, anti-inflammatories. But by the morning time, they decided to go ahead with the surgery. Did he get worse overnight? Did he got worse. So that's why they thought it was, you know, better to have the surgery. I believe he was still able to stand. I wasn't there, so I don't know. Okay. Um, so they took him in for surgery. He was quite stressed when he was in there. He's quite a, an anxious dog. You know, he's lovely. He's like so happy, but he gets, he is quite anxious at times. Sure. And obviously with the breathing issues as well, it wasn't the best. So he was in for about six days. Then I brought him home mainly because he was so anxious, but he just didn't get any better. You know, he actually got his walking got worse after surgery. Which so, did they did they find another slipped disc? Yeah, on the MRI yeah. for the second yeah, one. So yeah, a second one. So basically, the first one they done, then they done the fenestration on the next one. So it right. was the next one down. Okay. That had gone. So they done that one and fenestrated the next one to it. So it's kind of the four discs that have been. So two have been done and two have been fenestrated now. Um, he's not incontinent though. So he, he can voluntarily pee on his own. He knows when he needs to go. And, yeah. and, and what have they said about his, his status now? Is, is he able to feel his toes now? Not really. The right one, slightly, but okay. not left one. So the right one I can even see is a wee bit more, it's got a wee bit more kind of like rigidness to it, if that makes sense. The left one still flops about on his paws. Um, but it's the position of his legs that confuses me yeah so so when i say feel um some people call it deep pain deep perception pain. yeah they said slight deep pain on the right hand side but not on the left not on the left okay so a, a couple things i mean one french bulldogs as i'm sure you know you know now they're very very prone to intervertebral disc disease um mm -hmm. two 
just like you, the vast majority of people have no idea that intervertebral disc disease exists until it, you know, too late. Yeah. Until it comes right up. So, um, so, and I'm sure you became a bit of an expert from June of last year until January of this year. And, you know, that's yeah. what caused you to be aware and, and go on in. Yeah. Um, so obviously your, your concern is, well, gosh, why, why did he get worse one and two? Will he get better now? Yeah. Um, I guess with regards to the why did he get worse, some dogs do that. Um, many dogs with intervertebral disc disease, they go from being completely normal to being unable to walk just like mm -hmm. that. And sometimes um, it happens when they're at the veterinary office. So they're, mm -hmm. they're already showing symptoms of it, but they're getting worse. And whether they were at home when they got wet, worse or whether they were under a veterinarian's care when that disc was coming out, Mm -hmm. they, they can get worse. So, you know, it, it, it's happened to me. It's happened to veterinarians I know very well that are fantastic veterinarians. So, you know, never in a million years would I think, gosh, something happened at the veterinary office that caused no. him to get worse. It's just, you know, for lack of a better term, crap luck. Um, yeah. So him getting worse, obviously I don't have the MRI there. I don't have the surgery report. So, you know, and I can't physically touch your dog to, to, do a, a proper examination, but mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's challenging to do that second surgery. Um, sometimes if it's when it's when it's one space in between as opposed to right next to, that's usually easier. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes if it's on one side and then the other as opposed to both on the same side, that can make this the second surgery more challenging. Um, mm -hmm. usually if the dog can still feel its legs going into surgery, mm -hmm. there's usually like a 95% chance of things getting better with surgery. Yeah, which is probably what I expected. Uh -huh. Yep. Um, sometimes that dog's getting worse that even if we intervene here, the snowball started and they're, they're going all the way down to paraplegia, no deep pain. So it's not that there was a, a problem with surgery. No. It, it's just bad luck. And, and in my experience, it's usually French bulldogs. Um, yeah. so, uh, whenever I meet a French bulldog that's getting worse quickly, even if that dog is still um, able to move the legs, mm -hmm. but can't walk, or if they're paralyzed, but can still feel, I still tell that owner, hey, there's a chance that we could be getting worse. And even if I'm intervening here, we're, we're going to get worse into that paraplegic no deep pain. So, right. Um, so I don't think there's any reason to suspect that, you know. No, I think it's because they said that they were surprised themselves about how how he got worse. You know, they expected him to get bit, like a lot better because they said the surgery went to the well. So yeah. they were surprised themselves. So, um, you know, the million dollar question is, 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 is your, what's your dog's name? Buster. Buster. Is, yeah. is Buster going to get better? Is he going to regain the ability to walk? And to me, that all comes down to the question of can he feel the legs or not? Mm -hmm. um, if it were something that in January he couldn't feel the legs, I usually give it a 50% chance of getting better with surgery. Um, and if it's going to get better, meaning re regain the ability to walk, that usually the first thing to happen is that feeling comes back in the legs. Yeah. And if feeling comes back, it's going to happen in the first month. Some right. neurologists say two weeks, you know, I've had a couple dogs that couldn't feel it two weeks, but could at four weeks. So, mm -hmm. but so, sort of my line in the sand is if they can feel it four weeks, you know, they've got good chances of regaining the ability to walk. Yeah. You know, so on the one hand being that we're four months later and he's still not walking, it's a mm -hmm. little concerning. Yeah. Um, There's I, I a guess, lot of muscle wastage as well. Yeah, I, I could see that from the, from the video. Um, so to, to me, the, the, the biggest thing is, can he feel the legs? When, when was the last time that you've gone back to the neurologist or the, 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 the person that's done surgery? When is the last time they've been surgery? They seen him at about eight weeks, but then they said that really they didn't need to see him again unless anything changed. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so that would have been Marchish. Is that? So it would have been, yeah, so end of February, start mm -hmm. March. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so, I, I mean, I think it's worth them going and pinching another time. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, pinching his toes another time to assess for, for whether he can feel or not. Right. Um, if he still can feel a little bit in that right, I would still give him every chance with, you know, physical therapy, massage, yeah. swimming. You know, I would still be giving him a chance. Yeah, because I was doing that all until like, the COVID-19 kicked in and obviously everybody cancelled everything. So sure. I'm still doing the home physiotherapy and I've got the muscle stimulating machine as well. Depends, yep. So if he cannot feel it anymore, again, I, I never like being the person, you know, to, mm. to tell someone, hey, it's time to give up. Um, yeah. But, but I, I've personally never seen a dog regain the ability to voluntarily walk mm -hmm. a month after intervention if there's no deep pain perception. Right, uh-huh. And, and it's not to say, you know, give up, but just to sort of prepare you of, you know, and, and I'm sure you, you've seen over the last five months, he, he, he's a happy dog. And, yeah. you know, from, from here up, he's completely normal. He likes to play. Um, he's alert. He likes to eat. He gets excited when it's mealtime, what have you. Um, but, but what I don't want is you to have a, a false hope that he's going to no. regain the ability to walk. So no. it's, it's, it's a balance. You know, I, I never want to tell someone there's no hope, but I want to give them a realistic picture. Yeah. So I think the most important thing is having, having a, an experienced veterinary neurologist or veterinary surgeon that pinches toes all the time, mm -hmm. pinch and say, yep, we can feel or we can't. Um, right. Yeah. Do you have a wheelchair for him yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in the videos, I, I, I don't think I saw any with that. No, and I really started using it you know, now and again when we go out for walks. He wasn't too keen on it. So it's taken a wee while to actually get him going on it. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So the, the, the wheelchair just, you know, opens up possibilities for them and they're, you know, able to go run and chase the ball. And if you if yeah. you Google, you know, dog in wheelchair, you'll see, you know, a thousand videos of yeah. happy dogs. That's um, I, I had a dog for 11 years. She was in a wheelchair and, you know, as happy mm -hmm. as can be. So, yeah. Um, so I, I know I didn't necessarily give you an answer. Of, Is Buster going to walk again? Um, no, I'm fine. Know, I, 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 what do you think about his leg position? That was the thing that concerned me as well, because I see other dogs that are paralyzed and their legs they tend to be straight or they can bend them, but his seems to stay in that kind of frog like. Yeah. So, um, there's a couple things there. So, so you're absolutely right. Some dogs, when they, when they lose the ability to, to, to move their legs, um, they'll have increased tone. Um, so depending on where the disc was, if it was lower in his back, this second one, sometimes mm -hmm. it can cause the, the legs to actually be floppy as opposed to increased tone. Um, right. For what it's worth, Frenchies, I, I, I tend to see them be, have more floppy legs. Um, mm -hmm. So, the, the floppy legs versus the stiff legs doesn't tell me better or worse prognosis. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing wrong with his actual hips as such because it's almost like they're always splayed out, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I don't have any reason to think that he's got a, you know, that, that his hips are out of socket or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. I obviously can't say he's got perfect hips, um, but I don't, I don't think that he, the position of his legs is because of his hips. A lot of the Frenchies that I'll see that don't regain the ability to walk, yeah, they're just, they're confirmation. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's because they have these big barrel chests and these small, small waists. Um, I don't know if it has to do with their hips. I, I honestly don't know why they tend to frog leg more than say the dachshunds. Um, but I don't think it's anything for you to worry about. Right, it was just the fact that I couldn't really physically straighten his leg it was concerning me, I thought, you know, with that, is it something that I'm doing wrong? So, 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 um, you, so you like, can't, if you try no, to straighten it out, you can't? No, there's like resistance there. Gotcha. Okay. So that would be something, um, so, so when you were still going to, to the rehab facility, mm. was that, was, did you appreciate his, his legs being like that then? Always been a wee bit like that, but it seems to have gotten worse. Because he seems, because he's, he sits frog-legged, he moves about frog-legged, 
you know, he's never actually straightening his legs. So although I'm doing like bicycle movements and extensions and stuff over time, it's almost like the resistance is more and more. So when I yep. lift him up, his legs stay bent rather than going straight, if that makes sense. Yep, t t total sense. So um, I, the, the concern there would be, are his muscles, it's what we call contract contracting or getting contracture, where yeah. instead of them, them sliding, they, they do, they get stuck in, in one position. Um, mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing there is continuing with that range of motion, continuing with the massage and, right. and you know, if, if he likes to swim, let him swim, you know, using the wheelchair some, but it's the, the less he uses those muscles, the more likely he's going to lose that, that uh, flexibility in his joints. Um, okay. now, that would be a reason to consider with, excuse me, that would be a reason to continue with the, the rehab. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I just wasn't sure if there was something else I could do or, you know, if there was something technically with his hips that were causing it. So it's more just do more of the physiotherapy. Yeah, so, so physical therapy is a little bit outside my, my realm of expertise. I mean, that's obviously part of neurology, but yeah, just started becoming a, a big thing kind of after my, my training. So I'm not mm -hmm. an expert in, in rehab. I see a lot of dogs that need rehab. Um, yeah. So I would continue doing the range of motion, you know, the flexion extension, you know, maybe push it 5%, um, you know, not, not to the point of pain or anything like that, but just like you and me, if we were trying to increase our flexibility, you know, we yeah. try and go just a little bit further. Um, this is something that I would absolutely get the advice of someone that can see him in person yeah. and is in that, that realm of, of, physical therapy yeah it's so difficult at the moment because nobody's seen anybody unless it's an emergency <laughs> say again and say nobody's seen anybody at the moment unless it's an emergency right. so but yeah i'll uh, i'll definitely even send a wee video to like the people who were who done the surgery because they was going there for physiotherapy and the rehab okay. um but obviously that's all cancelled at the moment sure. but no that's great thank you it was just i was concerned about that and then obviously my main question was about um, you know, being able to walk again. Yeah, and 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 again, the, the biggest thing there is, can he feel them or not? Um, mm -hmm. a li little little discouraged that you know we're we're five months out. Um, yeah. But every dog is different. Some dogs take longer. Some dogs take shorter. Um, mm -hmm. the, the big line in the sand for me is, can he feel those toes or not? If he can, mm -hmm. I'm going to encourage you to give him as much time and physical therapy as possible. If he mm -hmm. cannot. I still think there's a purpose for time in physical therapy, but just want to set you up that the, the chances of getting a yeah. walk are much, 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 much lower. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm, as long as he's happy, that's the main thing. Totally. And it is. All right. Well, I, I don't know if you know that this was kind of the first time that, that we did this, uh, where, where we did it sort of face to face. Uh, um, I, 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 again, if, if you've got more questions that I, I couldn't answer or, um, you know, if you've had, got any feedback on how this may have been more useful to you, you know, we're, we're all ears because we plan on doing this again. And No, it's been great. It's, it's good to actually talk to somebody, you know, face to face about it. Because you do, you sit and read, do everything, but you, you have questions that you can't really answer. Yeah. And, and we're, we're somewhat limited, you know, one, legally, what I'm able to, you know, to discuss with someone. I, I can't diagnose or yeah. prescribe medications, um, you know, without physically examining the dog um mm -hmm. but you know we're, we're hopeful that this is valuable for for some people and um I, I i'm in miami i don't know if you know that but i talked with someone in louisiana someone in california and someone yeah. you know across the atlantic so this is this is kind of neat for us yeah no it's good definitely all right well thank you so much for no, for sharing you. your story and uh keep us in the loop with what the uh the surgeon says that's great thank you so much for your help as well Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.